All right, good morning, field biology students. This video is going to focus mainly on the spring constellations. Our last video lesson, we talked about the circumpolar constellations, which are the ones that are visible every night of the year, depending on weather conditions, cloud cover, things of that nature. Uh, today we'll focus on the spring constellations, and there's, there's three that we're going to focus on today. Those are the main three. And this would be your first one to look for, and a couple, couple of reasons why. Um, it's got a distinctive shape, and it's fairly easy to find. So Leo the lion, and if you look at the shape of this constellation, it, it has a very um, feline look to it. So... Leo in this case is a lion that's like lying down on his stomach and head up in the air and we can see the head and neck here of the lion and it makes a curve uh, not unlike that of a question mark except flipped backwards right so if you think of a question mark going like this and down you get the same effect but backwards and they call this part the sickle just like a a tool or if you remember sickle cell disease from biology so we, we find that sickle and at the bottom of the sickle is Regulus Regulus is the guidepost star of Leo it is a, a bright star fairly easy to find in the night sky and a good way to remember that when I learned these in college I used the fact that this star would be in a lying down lion would be in about the same place as the heart. And what does the heart do for your body? In terms of blood, it regulates, right? It, it, uh, it pumps the blood, it keeps things uh, going where they should be and at the right um, time, timing, pressuring, things like that. So uh, that's how I remember it. I remember the heart regulates Regulus. Another way to find Leo is if you know where the Big Dipper is, and you take your fist, and fist would be held out about arm's length. All right. Now remember, everyone's arms are a different length, and everyone's fists are a different size, but it works pretty good for most people. Hold your fist out at arm's length, put about three of your fists in between there, and you should be right in the vicinity of that sickle. Second spring constellation looks like Boots, but it's actually pronounced Buites. And Buites represents a herdsman or a bear driver, depending on uh, what source you're using. Okay, both work. So in terms of Greek mythology, uh, this was a herdsman, somebody that worked with livestock. I like to use the bear driver explanation and I'll explain that to you here actually you can see it right on the screen um, it chases the bears through the sky so as we know the constellations all seem to rotate right as the night goes on around the i suppose north star would be about here right so all these things tend to go around the north star like this and if you think about that, we can see that as the big and little dipper move, what's following him? Buites. He's driving or chasing the bears through the sky. And the guidepost star of Buites is Arcturus. And the way to remember that, or the way to find it, if you remember it, is you arc to Arcturus. So if we go to the big dipper here, I can get my cursor to come back. There it is. It is. If I start at the ladle of the dipper and I follow the handle this time, not the pointer stars like we used to find the north star, but the handle, I follow that arc or that curve. There's a natural curve to it, right? Curve. Bam. And there's Arcturus. So you arc to Arcturus. There's also called this Buites void. And what that means is there's a kind of a dark spot in the sky there where there's not a whole lot of visible um, stars. So they call it the Buites Void. 
All right. This slide shows a, a little more information there. Um, they have a nice line here showing that nice smooth arc. Okay. Remember, it's a smooth arc. You don't go like this and then just like go straight down or anything like that. Smooth arc it. And Buatis looks a lot like an ice cream cone. Or a kite. Sometimes people talk about a kite. It just depends on what what you like better. I don't know. I like ice cream cones more than kites, so I always say ice cream cone. And this will lead us to our third constellation. It says Spike to Spica. So you follow, you arc to Arcturus, and then just like you spike a football, you throw it straight down. Throw it straight down, and you hit a star called Spica. Okay? And this is the guidepost star of Virgo. So let's talk about Virgo. Virgo is a maiden. So uh, uh, a woman, a womanly figure. Uh, we can see here, this is about my uh, artistic skill of drawing a, a, a human figure. So makes me feel a little bit better about my art ability, seeing that they do this. Uh, but she is the maiden. And like we said, Spica is the guidepost star and you spike down to Spica. Okay. Uh, last night I went outside to to look. Uh, as you know, the, the moon is very full right now. I think the full moon is, I think it was last night was the official full moon day. But uh, when you have a full moon like that, that's light pollution. Okay, that's reflected light coming back to us, which um, challenges our eyes to see fainter pieces or fainter points of light such as stars so as i looked into the sky last night um oops leo leo was there but it was, it was kind of tough to see so as the moon was lower in the sky and i think it was a little bit shaded by my roof line in my house i could see leo pretty good 10 minutes later i went back out to look and it was it was a lot harder to see because that moon had 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 risen higher in the sky so uh, we're learning them right now at kind of a tough point with uh, with the light pollution, with the full moon. But the nice thing is, as you learn more and gain more knowledge, it's going to get easier to see these constellations. So kind of works out uh, that way, I guess. All right. What I would like you guys to do before next week is do a little bit of reading on mythology, particularly Greek mythology. Okay. So I'm going to post these links. They're here in the video, but I'll also post them separately so you can find them fast. Uh, these will be there. Spend some time reading through these before next week. Next week, I, we're going to start doing something with the const, uh, or the mythology aspect of that as we're learning. You know, we still have the summer constellations and, and the fall constellations. So uh, you can kind of get a a head start in understanding the mythology. And there's two sites here that I gave you. I'm sure there's way more sites than this, but these are two that I found fairly good. First one is called uh, comfychair.org, kind of a weird uh, title, but this is a very no frills website. It's like 20 years old, you guys. Um, but it's basically like reading a book on a screen. Okay, it's great for learning the basics. I'll click on it here. See if it takes us to it. It does. Okay, and I know. Slide that over. But you can see here, it's it's pretty basic. You got black background, white print. Um, there's no pictures. But you click on one. Let's click. Let's just click on Leo since we were talking about Leo today. And it is a zodiac constellation, and we'll eventually get to that too. Uh, it talks about Leo, his connection to Hercules, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all this information. Go back to the main myth page, and you can basically go through and read each one, okay? Whether you want to do it alphabetically, or maybe you want to do them in the way that you have learned them or know them. But I would make sure you go to every one, okay? Some of them have a little more information, such as Orion. Uh, Orion's visible right now in the in the West west part of the sky, the low west part of the sky. 
eventually we won't be able to see that come summer, I, I believe, if I remember right. Okay, uh, how do I get back to my PowerPoint now? Like that. Okay, uh, this other one is a little trickier to navigate, but it's got a lot more information. You can kind of get lost in this one, so you got to be uh, kind of pay attention to how it's organized. All right, got a cool earthly background there. And this one, the myths, you look at the left um, task bar there, and you can go to, let's just go to, well, let's go to Orion again. And when we go to that, there it is. And you can read about Orion there. And there's all these ads and stuff. And that's, you know, more modern websites. You got to have all that stuff. But uh, you can read about that. And you can basically go through all these. In addition, I'm not going to do it now because I'll get lost and not be able to find my way back. But uh, there's a lot of other very interesting things. You know, you got other cultural uses of uh, things in the skies. We got the solar system, um, the earth, you know, we'll probably talk about the moon next week. Maybe I'd like to do a little more teaching about the moon, the sun. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on here. So go ahead, get lost in that, but make sure you look at the uh, mythology aspect. So I don't expect you to become an expert at the myths right now, but I do want you to uh, start looking through it. You know, spend, I don't know, if you can spend, you know, 30 minutes on this site and 30 to 45 minutes on this site over the, over the weekend, I think that would be enough. But just to get yourself familiar with the, the uh, naming and some of the connections within the mythology. Okay. And we'll, we'll spend uh our our time here focusing on the greek myths because that's what most people are familiar with and then uh, as we get farther into the unit we can investigate i know some of you were curious about like the native american myths or the norse myths we can get to that eventually so all right i will end the video here hopefully see you at the zoom meeting at 10 a.m. for period two and 12.30 for period six. All right, have a good one.